if someone is going to have something sweet that has sugar in it, is there a significant advantage to making sure it's sweetened with sugar as opposed to high fructose corn syrup? Even if the answer is no sugar is better, if someone is choosing, should they make a significant effort to have sugar as opposed to high fructose corn syrup? Well, why don't you describe what high fructose corn syrup is? I'll, I'll do I it. Don't, I don't, you can. I don't like the question. Uh, okay. Because I don't think it's a question of whether using, you know, One cocaine or heroin. Yeah, and who's right, deciding right, which is worse? Right. It's still, I don't really get into that stuff. Well, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to get into that because mm -hmm. they're both, if they're both things are very harmful they're, to your health, why should we be condoning right. one over so another? He, he's right about that. But high fructose corn syrup is genetically modified. So Monsanto had to do with that. And so the corn, 97% of the corn cultivated in your country is genetically modified. So when they take the syrup, the sugar from that, it literally alters the brain, as Senef shows us with autism. Uh, you know, now there's finally lawsuits coming out from the legal profession against this, this type of pesticide. And this is really, really frightening stuff. So sugar is bad, but the added attraction is you'll get more cancer. You'll get more autism. Uh, and neurological problems by taking high fructose corn syrup, which they've now tricked you. They no longer call it high fructose corn syrup that has a target on it. It's called fructose. And I can show you it in health stores where they have that in foods, processed foods. And I'll, I'll just uh, say, basically, when you look at the scientific literature, um, sugar has a hugely detrimental effects to health. Fructose is similar, but the effects are more pronounced. Yeah. So you would develop non-alcoholic fatty liver disease more rapidly if most of the sugar you were consuming came in the form of fructose. The other thing that I was surprised, I'm trying to remember, I think it was 2009, a study came out showing that um, uh, probably about a third of the samples of, of uh, high fructose corn syrup actually contained uh, some mercury. And uh, one study showed as much as 0.57 micrograms per gram of corn syrup. And if you look at um, the uh, sort of the amount of corn syrup the average American is consuming, it's about uh, eight teaspoons or 34 grams uh, or so a day. And so if you, if, you know, if you do the math and then you look at what the EPA uh, suggests as a maximum intake of mercury, which is um, 0.1 microgram per kilogram body weight, if a person was taking in sort of the most contaminated corn syrup, um, they could actually be consuming around 20 micrograms of mercury a day. Actually, the EPA maximums, if you did the math, would be around five micrograms for a, for a, a, a 50 kilo or 110 pound person, and about 10 micrograms for a, a 100 kilo person or a a uh, 220 pound person. So, so it, theoretically, if you were getting the most contaminated corn syrup, you could actually exceed your mercury limits quite easily just by consuming the average amount of corn syrup, uh, and that's not consuming any tuna fish or any other mercury containing food. So there's a, that's a, a, a concern as well. I, I only use date sugar on my mercury. <laughs> <laughs> you and rub I'm it on? the same, I, I use only dried fruits uh, as my, um, my sweetener, so I'll use a few dates. I dehydrate my own pears in the summertime. I like dehydrated pears for uh, sweet, you know, sweetening any sort of treat, and that's it. I, I don't think we have need for other sugars, really. I agree, of course, and also the more you sweeten your foods and the more you use sweeteners and even artificial sweeteners, it deadens your taste for sweet. Yeah. And it stimulates your appetite to try to eat more calories and want to keep continue to eat sweets. So even if you're using non-caloric sweeteners, <laughs> you become a food addict and you will desire more sweetened things and you're weakening your taste buds to enjoy the natural flavor in strawberries and in and delicious natural foods. Even lettuce tastes sweet when you haven't been a sugar addict that dulled your taste buds. That's why you want to reduce all your processed food, the canned food, packaged food, because there's for sure sweetener. You know, in the 70s, we took fat out of the food because we didn't want to get fat. Well, we've added sugar to everything, and there's the high fructose corn syrup, and it's all kinds of sugars. So start getting fresh food. That, that's how you get out of that. Uh, I, I don't want to forget this, because the most brilliant thing I've ever read on this subject was Michael Pollan's 
uh, article in the Sunday edition of the New York Times. It's, you can find this on the internet. So look it up, pollen on high fructose corn syrup and the increase in weight in this country. It's, it, it's brilliant. He's not a scientist. He writes better than any scientist I've ever read. Have you ever read Pollen's work? No. And I mean, I'm going to tell you. After you read that article, you know why we're fat in this country and, and in England and everywhere else. Thank <laughs> you.